So the problem is, uh, my, I have a, a pudding, a guy who works at a pudding factory today, and it's going to be really fun to hear all about all the different kinds of pudding and the vats and stuff. But the problem is, I, I got like an ooze museum thing coming up, so I don't want, so everybody, I guess I'm probably not, pudding and ooze are different, uh, but I'm just kind of, Afraid someone would get confused and be like, "Oh yeah, I saw the pudding episode, or I heard the pudding episode," but it, and then they're like, "They were me- meant the ooze episode because pudding is kind of, I don't know, not really." Anyway, so this guy, his name is Todd Stump. He uh, w- wants to tell you all about his factory. He doesn't own it, but he works there. He has a boss. He has like a mean boss. One of those situations where the boss is, tells him to do stuff that he doesn't want to do. His name is Todd Stump, so the boss has like, ah, you know, it was Todd Stump. You're so stupid. No matter what I say, you get stumped. So that's a good question. You're like, huh? I don't know. But anyway, well, I shouldn't be telling him, telling you this story. I think Todd should be nice to meet you, Todd. Thanks for coming on the show. You're a hero. I'm again having a lot of cancellations, so. Uh, can, thanks a lot for showing up. Well, thank you, Peter. Um, as I said, my name is Todd Stump, and I work at a big pudding factory. And e- in each vat, there's four different kinds of pudding. We have 16 vats, and each vat has four different kinds. And this isn't a math lesson or anything, but 16 times 4 is 64. So we have 64 flavors of puddings that we sell wholesale. We have tours and stuff come in, and we give them... You know, at the end of the tour, we have like, you can get a cup or or two or three or 64, but we don't sell them. We sell the puddings to retail, to pudding retailers in the tri-state area, mainly in New Jersey, like the Secaucus area, down the Secaucus Newark corridor, but you know, Pennsylvania and New York too, and some, sometimes Delaware and sometimes Massachusetts, but mainly uh, the Newark Secaucus kind of area where everybody likes to have a lot of pudding all the time and the pudding specifically wait wait wait, hold on you're going a little fast for this show todd i want to ask you what kind of flavors you have what's the pudding factory called what what are the flavors well the pudding is the factory is called labyrinthus laboratoriorum which means a labyrinth of laboratories and it's just kind of supposed to emphasize how we're on the cutting edge of pudding technology and there's basically, you know, we got a lot of natural ingredients and stuff, but it's mainly like tailored to the taste of, to people's tastes. Like, you know, all these, everybody's all about like putting their hands, oh yeah, put your hands in the food and like, you know, like all this bread like hand rolled bread yeah do you know what hands do all day think about the last 20 things your hands did revolting and okay fine so you washed your hands first of all even apes wash wash their hands would you would you have bread rolled by an ape yeah i didn't think so so i don't think washing your hands is gonna really get that repulsive hand nonsense out of the way you're still gonna get skin flecks in there so that's what I have to say about natural food. The puddings we have at Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum is the cutting edge of pudding. There's, you know, fine, we have milk and stuff, but it's been pasteurized, it's been deputized, it's been homogenized. You know, it's mainly like robo milk, to be honest, and it's just so tasty to eat. Eat raw. Not that we have anything raw. Nothing's really raw at Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum, but it is all pudding. Technically, it's pudding. In the FDA's, you know, the the definitions promulgated by the FDA. If you look at pudding, what we have made is pudding, according to their definitions. Maybe according to your grandma, they're not. Your grandma has to put her hands all in the pudding. But try asking your grandma to make razzmatazz colored pudding. Bright blue and it's so tasty. It's our this season's hottest new flavor. And if you, well, if you eat enough of it, it'll be so good. And so that's bright neon blue and it glows in the dark. And we have edible glow in the dark 
ingredients that'll make you never lose your way in the nighttime. Especially if you eat it for a few, for an hour, you'll become glow in the dark yourself and you'll get a big, cute stomach ache. But it'll be nice and it won't make any difference to your life. And we also have, well, we have Chaco too. And we get all the Chaco beans from, you know, like this just social justice, like equal pay place or whatever. And, and it's so good. And we get it super cheap and like nobody can tell that it's. And I don't even ask any questions about that, but I just have the tasty Chaco. And you can get it too. You can get it. Basically, it's really difficult for if you live around in the tri-state area, you're gonna have a difficult time eating pudding that uh, that hasn't been produced, really given birth to, no, 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 manufactured by Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum. And I think I'll be calling them LL from now on. Or Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum. Don't make me pick, Peter. Oh, and of course I wouldn't ever make you do anything like that. Thank you. But uh, let me let me ask you a question about the puddings. Do you have any? It seems like this like hand, all natural, grain free kind of movement is getting down. Everybody's getting down with this like craft beer kind of movement. And I was just wondering. I was just wondering what kind of competition you have from those kinds of pudding people. Well, so you know how when you make pudding in your house, there's always that skin that develops, that like film that shows up? Yeah, of course, yeah, people love that kind of film. Well, they, whether they love it or not, the problem is that's actually like human skin. Like, you make that stuff in your house, there's skin everywhere, and there's definitely skin on you. I don't think it's gonna come as a surprise that like you have skin, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody already knows all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> imagine someone who is like, Oh, really? I have skin? I had no clue, you know what I mean, Peter? Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting it. Yeah, so anyway, the, that skin on your pudding is human skin. Or maybe, you, you don't have any cats, do you? Well, I, I'm, I kind of don't want to answer that question. Well, if you do... There's probably some cat skin on that pudding skin. At Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum, we have a vacuum chamber where the pudding is made, separated by that kind of glass that's like made out of plastic kind of deal. You know what I'm talking about? That kind of kind of thing. And it's all robos. And we, you know, we got like your joysticks and we got some buttons. We have like. You have all kinds of stuff that'll make your pudding so tasty. And it doesn't, it's never touched by human hands. The only time you want to, like, okay, we can't stop our retailers from doing stuff with our pudding. I don't know what we're going to do, what they do with it. But as far as we're concerned, on the crates that, that our puddings come in, it says never touched by human hands. You know, it sounds like says a lot of those places, we those businesses, like, for example, like, Mart and Robbins and um, a lot of Froyo or Frogurt kind of places. All of those places probably have that like grain free, like like farm fresh crap going on, like gluten stuff. Yeah, like oh, our pudding is like hand pushed or whatever. But like we can't stop them from doing that. But we got, a, you know, we got a lot of those the more non-Stone Age kinds of pudding places that will totally be happy to say, you know, with pride, like made in America, made without human touching, because the body is disgusting. I was, you know, I'm kind of a lowly sort of dude in the at uh, Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum, but. I, one thing I would like to say is that I really wanted to change our slogan to the body is disgusting, but I mean, I think that I was going a little overboard. I knew I was, I went, I, I was talking to a lot of people about it and they said, you don't want, you don't want a food company to have the word disgusting in their, sl their slogan. And I was just thinking like, that's true when it just kind of points to the fact that slogans are not meant to be analyzed very hard because 
if you analyzed the body is disgusting and you realized that we do not introduce the body into our pudding any body any human body or animal body and more are the place where the pudding is made is more or less sterile it doesn't even have I mean the milk okay fine the milk maybe has some bacteria in it but it's mainly dead bacteria anyway the point is I think the body is disgusting is an excellent description of our philosophy but it wasn't it never even made it up one rung you know I didn't even I don't even think my supervisors ever heard about it it just kinda got the uh, the other boys at the third shift they all said hey you don't think you should do that you shouldn't even tell anybody which is I mean I told you which is fine and it's not like this is gonna how many f hits does this, does this sh get anyway well not very many yeah that's what I thought but anyway so but oh, wait hold on what is but what is the Slogan of your pudding factory. You want to know what it is? We innovate to make horizons smart. Which is, it sounds kind of like a marketing company's slogan. And that's mainly because we're not, I mean, we're a pudding company, but we're a pudding marketing company more. Like, I'm one of ten employees who actually make pudding in Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum. In a company that, that has over 10,000 employees, there's only 10 who actually make the pudding in the factory in Secaucus. And the rest of them are mainly marketeers. We just market the pudding around to retailers, and the retailers market their pudding to the human bodies who eventually will add the pudding to their metabolic collection. Components or whatever I don't know uh, we have a lot of fun new tasty flavors I talked about the neon blue one and the Chaco of course but yeah so what's your favorite flavor I don't know I guess I kinda like the celery flavored one celery come on you you guys don't make a celery flavored pudding yeah I know it sounds stupid it is stupid but I like it cuz I like celery I'm just kind of a, you know, kind of a quirky guy, and I just love celery, and so I love celery pudding, and that's actually, it's green, right? Let me guess. Well, some of it's green. It's kind of like green and white. It's kind of like really light green, like like green tea you accidentally poured milk into. You know, I like celery. It has those, like, white strands. What are those things? I don't know. You're the celery expert. I'm, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I just like like it. I'm not a botanist. Anyway, botany is dirty. Like, literally almost. Almost literally dirty. Because there's dirt. Yeah, I, yeah, sure. So, but wait, hold on though. So, where do we, where can we, I've never seen any celery pudding anywhere. Who, who sells it? Oh, um, Mr. Puds, uh, down on 5th. You know, there's plenty. I mean, there's Chill. That's the Frogurt place. There's, uh, there's the garden, the, and they have all kinds of stuff like that. But the only thing is, I've been there before, and they're like, oh, yeah, our celery pudding is, like, all natural, like, with all natural ingredients, and, like, there's not even any, nothing, it's, like, unvaccinated and shit. And, but, like, no, it's not. I, I saw, I, like, probably made, I saw that stuff get created with my own eyes, and I can tell you for a certain fact that that's not how it works. That celery stuff is maybe... I think, uh, if I recall, the recipe for the celery pudding is... There's like... That vat shares the... Or the celery pudding shares the vat with the vanilla, the baked bean, and the caramel pudding. Well... I don't know about some of this stuff. This, but I think you're making stuff up. You, you think I made up the baked bean stuff? Yeah, I didn't. Okay, yeah, you caught me. I didn't think you made up the vanilla. Well, I didn't make up any of them. The baked bean. I don't like the. Listen, I'm not here to be like, oh yeah, the. It's this guy. I mean, I hate it, but, but who cares? I'm, you know, no one, no one listens to this crap anyway. So it's not like I'm gonna get in trouble. No one listens to this shitty podcast. You. So I'm back with my friend Todd Stump, who works at Labyrinthus Laboratoriorum. Wait, and what does that mean again, Todd? 
It means a labyrinth of laboratories, and it's a pudding company. And I was just talking about how the celery pudding has basically no celery in it, but you know who cares? The retailers, all the company, all the restaurants or whatever we sell our puddings to, they don't, they don't, we, they can say whatever they want. They can lie and cheat and steal. We don't care. We don't care what they do as long as they buy our pudding. And they do because we have almost, we have over 9,000 marketeers working around the clock getting that pudding to those restaurants. And those restaurants put the pudding inside of their customers' bodies. And those customers go home and they bring the pudding home in them. You sound like you're gonna, you're gonna be like, oh, and the pudding is gonna like take over their minds and those pudding in the no yeah i get it like i've seen all of those 10,000 movies where that happens but obviously pudding doesn't there's no like mind control component to pudding the, I, if anything the mind control aspect is in the marketeering which doesn't even affect the customers i mean it only affects the retailers so if you if you're like desperate to get into this like the mind mind controlling pudding thing then you might as well just get into the you might as you might as well say like the retailers are getting their minds controlled by all the marketeers at lab la, at labyrinthus laboratoriorum but the customers don't i mean the customers might have their minds controlled by the how the retailers retail the pudding and they probably put all kinds of crap about how like yo it's like a hundred percent grain free farm fresh cage free pudding and like whatever and like all those all the customers who are like totally brainwashed already about like farm free cage crap all that nonsense they're probably like you know totally into it but like we don't we don't deal with customers customers are the customers do like the grossest things with our pudding like our pudding is made in human free vacuum vats it's put on sterilized trucks i mean the inside sterilized obviously i don't want to waste any time explaining that the tires of the trucks aren't sterilized but the inside just, and then the once they get to the retailers like B robins like big tabitha's pudding tub we got a lot of you know who knows what happens what do those idiots do with our pudding at that point i mean it's not i don't want to say it's stupid to eat the pudding but it is disgusting to eat the pudding and i do i even as i eat the celery pudding in my my studio apartment on the 20th floor of the borse building i know what i'm doing is gross but i have to well, what? how come you think it? there's nothing that there's nothing gross about eating? It's just... Well, there's nothing gross about like putting it up to your lips, I guess. But after that, you. I'll tell you. How about this? Would you eat if there's nothing gross about eating? Would you eat a bolus of? Ch no, no, that that's enough. So I have some errata to get down with. I unfortunately I made some mistakes so far. One of them was from it, all the way back from episode one. My guest, Strom Thurmond, said something about evil radiation or something going from Russia over the Antarctic to the to over Canada and into Boston. What he meant was Arctic. Eh, I can't can't blame him too hard. In a number of episodes, I was I named the author of the Sutra Kirtanga as Ganadara Sudara Swami, which is, but it's I, that was wrong. It's actually Ganadara Sudharma Swami. So or you know it's probably not that either. I'm you know I'm not good at pronouncing anything. And in episode nine, I think I may have, or someone said something about something being self-reflexive, and that's redundant. Reflexive is all that's required to mean what I meant it to, or what whoever was talking about it was meant. I've been getting a lot of hate mail about my my letters that I get, but it's not up to me who sends me letters. I'm not gonna read any of the mean letters, just a nice one, like the one from my friend Herman Jacoby, who translated this long kind of text called the Sutra Kirtanga, and he wanted, he said, 
Hey Peter, I want you you gotta read these the following three texts from the Sudra Kirtanga and it's from it's from uh, Sudra Kirtanga book one lecture seven called Description of the Wicked and it's one through three. It's texts one through three and it starts out like this. Earth, water, fire, wind, grass, trees, and corn, and the movable beings, viz. The oviparous, viviparous, those generated from dirt and those generated in fluids. These classes of living beings have been declared by the jinnas. Know and understand that they all desire happiness. By hurting these beings, men do harm to their own souls and will again and again be born as one of them. Every being born high or low in the scale of the living creation among movable and immovable beings will meet with its death. Whatever sins the evildoer commits in every birth, for them he must die. And there's a, uh, there's a couple footnotes here. One of them goes like this. The last two classes are, according to the commentators, one, lice, bugs, etc., and two, beings like cotton threads in thick milk, sour barley gruel, etc. Apparently vibrios are meant. And then two, the next footnote is um, migati equals miyate. Another rendering offered by Sri Lanka is he will be filled by karman. So thanks a lot. That's uh, cool, man. Thanks for Thanks, Chairman. Thanks for translating that the Sutra Kirtanga by Ganadara Sudharma Swami. Whoops. <laughs>